Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And today I'm going to weigh in on EV weight consider EV conversion weight considerations. Now, uh, this is the second time I'm going to shoot this video because the first time I made a mistake right out of the get-go and it wasn't caught until the editing sequence. So everything you know after that was kind of messed up so bear with me as I bear with myself and I do this all a second time so the first weight consideration that we're going to talk about is the gross vehicle weight rating GVWR and the last time I went through this video I said those words gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, and never caught that I had swapped those two around. I had GWVR. <laughs> and in editing, we caught it. So anyway, uh, so the gross vehicle weight rating is the manufacturer's rating on that vehicle as its maximum weight that it can weigh. That's the vehicle all the cargo, occupants, everything, cannot exceed that weight, okay? That's something that in the lead acid days, we used to see people do that. They would kind of, they'd kind of blur that line. And when you do that, you're taking a risk. The car's designed with that number, or they get that number from the design. It's not one you want to exceed, it's one you want to respect. So know what your gross vehicle weight rating is and you need to know the next one also. And that is your curb weight. And the curb weight is the weight of the vehicle with all its fluids and everything. That, that's the weight of the vehicle ready to roll. Okay, and that brings us then to probably the most important one, or one of the most important ones, and that is payload. Now, the payload is the gross, I'm doing it again, I don't know why I want to do GW here. Brain and hand are not communicating well. Gross vehicle weight rating minus the curb weight. Okay. That equals your payload. So if, if this is fixed, and that curb weight goes up, your payload would go down, okay? And that's possible based on our next one, which is the converted weight. This is gonna be the weight of the vehicle after you convert it. And it could be more or less than the original curb weight, but typically it's a little more, okay? Uh, the, the weight of the batteries will usually be the thing that throws you over. The, the motor's going to be less than the engine, but the battery pack uh, can be heavier. So depending on your, your range requirements and so forth, um, the converted weight can be plus or minus what the curb weight is. But whatever it is, the payload's going to change. Now the payload is going to be the gross vehicle weight rating subtracting out the converted weight gives you your new payload. Okay? And that payload needs to be enough for you, any passengers, and any cargo. Okay? You don't want to design and build a conversion that has so little payload that there's not room left for you. And I've seen it. 
I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but I, I, I've, I've seen it many times where people, you know, they, they were focused on the range and everything and not exceeding this, forgot about themselves, forgot about the payload, passengers and cargo. Okay? Now, an example of this, you know, a small light car, that's good for, you know, uh, range and so forth. We can get, you know, the same amount of range with a smaller battery pack if our vehicle is lighter. And, but a lot of times those small light cars have a very small payload. That's because their gross vehicle weight rating is not very high. An example, say, uh, uh, first generation Mazda Miata has a 380 pound payload. That means you take two 200 pound guys and put them in that car and it's overloaded. You're exceeding the payload and you'll exceed the gross vehicle weight rating. And that's not a good idea. The car will not perform uh, as well and as safely as it was designed to do. So a few more we're going to talk about. One is, this is another important one. These are all important actually. Weight distribution. And so weight distribution is important. And the main rule of thumb there is that we want to replicate the original weight distribution. So if you remove 600 pounds out of the front of a vehicle, you want to put 600 pounds back. But I see a lot of times where people will remove 600 pounds and they put 200 pounds back and they put 400 pounds in the back that wasn't there before. Okay. Uh, a good example of um, a weight distribution um, mistake that I commonly see are with pickup trucks. And I mean, aesthetically, I've seen some really beautiful conversions. They open the hood, it's gorgeous. But from an engineering perspective, they've, they've missed the mark. So again, using my same example, maybe they removed 600 pounds from under the hood and they put 200 pounds in its place. And then they put 600 pounds in the bed or under the bed. And that's fine as far as just that position because in a truck, they're designed to carry, you know, um, the payload back there. So 600 pounds in the bed of a truck is okay. What's not okay is not having that same weight up front as it had originally because the vehicle is designed, the suspension, the braking and so forth, for a certain amount of weight over that front axle. And if you don't have that, and it's too light, when you go to make a hard braking maneuver, the front wheels will break loose. You'll lose traction. And then you'll learn the law of physics that says that friction at rest is greater than friction of motion. And that could be a hard lesson to learn with your beautiful classic converted truck. So you want to replicate the weight distribution when you're doing your conversion. Okay. A couple that fall under this. There's the boy, I'm telling you, the old hand and brain are not communicating. Axle weight. Okay. You want to have the proper axle weight. You don't want to have too much weight on an axle, just like the uh, example I gave, not having enough weight on an axle. So you want to have the proper weight distribution. You don't want to overload front or rear. And I I think it probably goes without saying, you don't want to have all the weight, you know, on the driver's side or the passenger side. You, you want the car to be <clears throat> balanced left to right with the proper front to rear 
weight distribution. And the other is the um, center of gravity. And hopefully I wrote that correctly, it's spelled correctly. Center of gravity. We want to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. And so you look at, you know, um, vehicles that are uh, factory produced EVs, EVs that are uh, designed from the ground up like the Tesla, um, they all have a very low center of gravity. They put the batteries down low. Well, when you're doing a conversion, we have limitations because we're taking a, an existing vehicle and modifying it from its original design. And so you may not be able to put that weight as low as you'd like to. But we want to be very conscious of this and put it as low as possible. Keep the weight you know, centered as much as possible. You're you're not going to get a 50-50 weight distribution on a car that had a 60-40 from the factory. That typically isn't going to be something you're going to be able to, to work out. But it depends. Depends. There's, there's vehicles that, uh, you know, from the factory are light on the rear end, and there's some that are light on the front end. And so there may be room for a little bit of uh, adjustment there. But make sure you do your homework and the engineering so that you maintain a safe ride. So these are the seven main considerations uh, that we want to think about when we're thinking about doing an EV conversion. The gross vehicle weight rating, that's the maximum that car can weigh. Our curb or converted weight. And then our payload. And the payload again is the we're going to take the gross vehicle weight rating, the maximum weight of that vehicle can be, and we're going to subtract that weight of it after we've converted it, and that will give us our payload. And the payload should be great enough to handle you and your passengers and any intended cargo. And then weight distribution, having the proper axle weights and keeping the weight low so we have a low center of gravity all right well i think that just about covers the main uh, topics i want to talk about and uh, so until next time hope you enjoy the ride